This is a closer look at Operation New Dawn and the changes in Iraq. General Helmick, you are the number two man in charge here. How would you describe Operation New Dawn? It's a mindset change, really, for uh, the, op the forces here. Uh, our, everybody in the country in September turned into an advisor and trainer. The entire force, all 46,000 that are here, are focused on strengthening the Iraqi security forces. And that's all of their military, which is their Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, and the host of different police forces that they have. So when you put those two forces together, we're training about 800,000 Iraqi security forces right now inside the country of Iraq. That has to be hard on our soldiers, that change in mindset. The American soldier is an amazing person, absolutely phenomenal. There's nothing that, that soldier cannot do, and we're doing great. And they really are excited about the job that they're doing here. All are taking the mission that they have with enthusiasm, with professionalism, and with confidence. We had the official end of combat last year, August, I believe it was. Has the combat truly ended? I mean, we had a VBID on Route Irish today. The only thing that really changed is our mission. Our mission changed from, uh, like I mentioned, Operation Iraqi Freedom to Operation New Dawn, where everybody became an advisor and trainer. This is still a very, very dangerous place. We have to have, and we do have, the right to make sure that all our forces are protected from any kind of threat. You were here earlier in the war. You were part of the team that captured Saddam Hussein's sons, and you were here in the later part of the surge. How would you describe the change between then and now? The difference between then and now is like night and day. Uh, the Iraqi security forces have come such a, a long way. We didn't have an army, and when I say we, I'm talking about Iraqis. We didn't have an army, we didn't have an air force, we didn't have a navy, we didn't have an Iraqi Marine Corps. All the equipment that they had was old Soviet-style equipment. Now, fast forward to where we are today. 14 divisions in their army, they have uh, M1 tanks, they have artillery pieces, they have mortars, 550 to 600,000 police. Their Air Force now has intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance airplanes where they can actually do live down feeds into their own operation centers. They have a helicopter uh, command now where they have their own helicopters. They have uh, T-6 airplanes that are trainers for an advanced jet fighter. They're training their own pilots. They're training their pilots in English language training. Their Navy has 15, or getting 15 different 35 meter patrol ships. It is like night and day from where we were to where we are today. We're not where we need to be. We're not where we want to be. But thank goodness, we're not where we used to be. So, sir, what you're describing is a pretty robust security force here in Iraq. So who are the enemies? You have to look around the region. For the last eight years, they've been fighting inside the cities to provide a stable and secure environment internally into the country. Uh, what we and they want to do is have the police begin to provide security in the cities and have their army move out of the cities and focus outward to provide a security on their, on their border. The neighborhood is, uh, has many, many more weapons than Iraq has. Uh, from tanks to ballistic missiles. I'm talking about the countries in the region. And uh, Iraq needs to have a, an ability to defend its sovereign territory on ground, in the air, and by sea. With so many bad guys out there, how does this impact your mission? Well, our mission doesn't change. Again, our mission here is to advise, train, and assist Iraqi security forces. Secretary Gates was just here recently, and he said that if Iraq asked, we would be willing to extend our military presence here. What do you think? We have a very detailed plan to go from where we are today, 46,000 plus, down to zero. And it's really not an end to the relationship, by the way. It is a transition of the relationship. As you know, we have a United States Embassy here. The Embassy will have an Office of Security Cooperation. And our goal is to move from where we are today, from a military-led effort in Iraq to a civilian-led effort in Iraq. What is your top struggle right now? 
not enough time. Do you have enough manpower? Oh, yeah. We have the people we need uh, right now. We just don't have the time to uh, finish off all the things that we need to do with the Iraqi security forces. What would you want the American public to know about the mission in Iraq? I would say this to the American people. They could not be prouder of their army. I mean, the things that our soldiers are doing is amazing. And the talent that we have in America's army is off the charts. This force here, they are making an incredible difference for the people of Iraq and the people of the United States can be proud. General Helmick, thank you for your time. Thank you for your insight. From Soldiers Radio and Television, that's The Closer Look.